<clears throat> What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Off the Glass podcast channel. Don't have a full episode for y'all today, but a big, big day of news around the association. So got to give y'all our instant reactions. As you can see by the title and the thumbnail, the Milwaukee Bucks fired their head coach, Adrian Griffin, after 41 games. That's nuts. <laughs> 40, oh, I got 43. I need to change the, the slides. 43 games. My bad. 43 games into the season, and he was 30 and 13. I know it says 30 and 11, but he was 30 and 13 on the season and got fired. That's that's kind of crazy when you think about it, like having that good of a record and getting fired. They're the two seed in the East. It's about to be the All Star break. It, it, it got to be a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff going on for, the, for him to get fired doing well like that. Like They had their problems on the court, but like at the end of the day, bro, you're out of the two seed. you got 30 and 13. Like, come right. on. Definitely a lot going on behind the scenes. Before we get into it, housekeeping, as always, like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Go ahead and follow the socials there at the bottom, at Off The Glass Pod on Instagram and at Off The Glass Podcast on TikTok. I think I'm going to probably throw this on the audio platform, too, so if you're listening on the audio platforms, be sure to follow the feed um, and drop a five-star review. Head over to YouTube, like, comment, subscribe as well. It helps us out a ton. So I'm going to give a little bit of uh, extra context. Because like you said, there's definitely some off-the-court, behind-the-scenes stuff that's, I think, played into this decision. He had the issue with Terry Stotts before the season even started, who had came in as his main assistant coach, which would seem like a perfect pairing. They trade for Damian Lillard. He was Damian Lillard's coach for – the earliest stretch of his career when he was in Portland. Um, they got into some argument. Griffin yelled at him. It just There was some rift that went on. He ended up leaving. So that was like strike one. Apparently during the in-season tournament, him and Bobby Portis got into it, and Bobby Portis challenged him. That seems like it might have been strike two. He tried to do stuff on the defensive side of the ball that the players weren't feeling. They ended up trying to go against it. There was a lot a lot off the court behind the scenes. And again, this is just what's been reported so far. Now that he's out the door, I'm sure more is going to come out over the next couple of days. Um, it's tough. It's tough inheriting a situation like that, especially as a first time head coach, like not being a guy with any established reputation as a head coach where they were the one seed last year. Like <laughs> there is, it cannot be a more pressure filled situation for him. Um, but if you're going strictly off results, like we said, he's got 30 wins. He's the two seed in the East. After a slow start, too. Right. Like, I don't know. What do you think? What do you think about the Bucks' decision here? I mean, honestly, like you said, I, tr I truly feel like it comes down to all the stuff that happened off the court. Because on the court, at the end of the day, I, bro, like you said, they're the two seed. They have a great record. Like, you can't – if it was nothing off the court, there's no reason you can you can fire this coach strictly off of what like uh, obviously you know the defense have been pretty piss poor but even then like you still have well, I believe like the second best offense in the league right now so it's like even with your struggles with the first year coach you don't fire him <laughs> unless there's like a lot of stuff going on off the court so honestly like I said I agree with you I think more stuff eventually will come out and then it'll start to make a little bit more sense because even the stuff that like you mentioned just now yeah there's problems. Would I have fired him off, off of just all that alone? I don't think so. So it's like absolutely it, not. It, it has to be more off the court stuff. Yeah. So I'm I'm glad you brought up their defensive deficiencies. I have the stats pulled up here. So as of last night's win over Detroit, their 43rd game of the year, they were second in the league in offensive rating, only point three behind the Pacers, who again we talked about was on a historic pace this season. They're second in the league in points per game, also to the Pacers. On the defensive side of the ball, they're 22nd in defensive rating. If you just look at their last 10 games, they're actually 27th in the league, and they're 29th in giving up the most points per game. The only team that gives up more points is also the Pacers. Mm -hmm. So this is a team that is putting up I – mean, their offense is clicking on all cylinders, as was expected when you add – Damian Lillard to a team that already has Giannis and Chris Milton and Brooke Lopez. The issue that I think all of us saw, but I don't think anybody 
recognize going into the season was, yeah, you lose Drew Holiday. Who's going to be that point of attack guy to step up? I think, I, at least I assume, you got Giannis, you got Brooke. Right. They can cover it up on the back end? No. No, right. they cannot. Swiss cheat. Every guard they play is free. It's free food, bro. You, you, bro, if you go on prize picks, whatever their over is, hit it. Bet it. Thanks. Bet the over. <laughs> Every guard is scoring on this Bucks team. And I I do really believe part of what played into it is they just played two games, I think within three or four days against the Pistons. Um, and they were tight games. And the Pistons are missing Cade Cunningham. And this is a Pistons team that, with Cade Cunningham, just tied the record for the longest losing streak in a single season in NBA history. That can't. That's <laughs> got to be unacceptable. Like, I get it. I really do. But even then, they won. And even right. it's like all of that being said, it's still not enough to fire a coach. Unless it's some crazy off the course, like regardless, I understand the defense is terrible. It's like, bro, I honestly, I truly feel like it has to be something along the lines of like he lost the players and like completely lost the locker room. Because the what other reason is there besides like people you just don't have the voice in there no more? Like even though you know you guys are in the, the two seed and have a really good record, like moving forward, you can just they the front office probably seeing later down the line like eventually this is not going to work out because this guy has. No trust of any of the players. But this offseason, when they hired him, didn't they involve Giannis and Chris Middleton in the process? That was the whole, that was the big thing. Like Giannis like gave him his like stamp of approval, which is <laughs> which is crazy. The switch up is nah, bro. The switch up is that's not okay. You cannot uh, go from forget how many games you played. This happened in the offseason. We're talking about last summer. It's been eight months. You went from this is our guy to we cannot can't even finish the season with him. I'm about to say we can't finish the season at the, with the two seed. It, it'd be different if they kept if like you know that slump they had in the beginning of the season. If that just kept going like all throughout the year and they're like middle of the pack, right. then I'd be like, okay, I, I get it. But it's like they were winning games. You know the defense still sucks, but they turned it around as far as in the win column. So. I, I, honestly, at this point, I'm waiting to see what comes out like later on down the line. Well, about more off the court stuff. So, if, what's been reported so far too is that the the top guy to in line to replace oh, him is God. <laughs> Doc Rivers. Oh, uh, okay, all right. Uh, you know how I feel about Doc Rivers, bro. <laughs> like, come on, bro. What are we talking about? Like, they. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, the, Apparently, and I didn't know this until, until he got fired today and it, it got reported, during the NCC tournament, the Bucks front office and the powers that be set up a meeting with Adrian Griffin and Doc. And it was like, Doc, we need you to like advise him. And they like worked on strategy. So y'all lost in the in-season tournament to Indiana, right? Generally, even since then, you're saying that Adrian Griffin's performance, however they've played on the court, forget the win-loss. I'm assuming it has to be a lot predicated on their defense, right? If Doc had any type of hand in that, you about to hire him? <laughs> that makes no sense. <laughs> bro, right. None of it makes sense, bro. What? The logic isn't there, which, again, all goes back to what you're saying. There has to be more off the court. 100%. Because that just that don't even make sense, bro. Because like, logically, that makes no sense, bro. Like you said, if he if he's giving you the input and it's still not working, it's like, all right, let's just fire him and go straight for Doc Rivers. But honestly, it's at this point, bro. People are hiring Doc Rivers off of like that one championship he got in the regular season success. Because, bro, I'm not hiring this guy so he can blow a two one or three one lead, bro. I'm not. I'm not doing it. I'm sorry. There's no way. And like I said, especially if the fact that he already is kind of giving his input with the organization and with the team. And clearly it's not like, even if when you guys win, it's not working to the front office's standards. Right. I'm not going to hire that guy. That just doesn't, I don't know. It, it don't make sense. But at the end of the day, when you hi, when you fire a coach in the middle of the season and you guys are still a contending team, I, I can't, I, I don't know. I feel like they're just panicking. Like they had to yes. hire Doc Rivers because like what you can't bring in, 
you can't make some intern or uh, interim coach. You can't bring nobody up. You need somebody that actually kind of knows what they're doing a little bit as far as just coaching in general. Because you guys are still trying to win a championship. You guys are still in position to win a championship record-wise and just where the team is right now. So I feel like they kind of just panic and it's like, all right, we, we got to bring in someone who at least has some, like, coaching experience. I'm trying to think, where is Kenny Atkinson at? Because I saw his name get brought up as well. Um, okay, he's still with the Warriors, is what I thought. Um, I was going to say, if, yeah, you can't bring in an a interim guy or a guy that doesn't have a ton of experience promoting assistant, but – I know it's different, obviously, in season and out of season, but Joe Mazzulla got the Celtics job two weeks before camp started. That's facts. So he, it, it, again, different being thrown into the fire right before the regular season versus being thrown into the fire at the all-star break. <laughs> I completely agree with that. But I feel like there's something to be said there about if you have somebody there already that you your the team will rally around, you don't, you don't need a coach that's going to develop talent. The talent's there. They're developed. You need a guy who, you know, schematically has X's and O's on the defensive side of the ball to figure out coverages. Realistically, for the playoffs, you need somebody who is a schemer, somebody like a Spolstra, somebody like a Ty Lue. Not saying you're going to get those guys, but somebody cut from that kind of cloth because this is a team coming off of one of the most embarrassing playoff <laughs> bounce outs that you could have. You were a one seed and you lost to an eight seed. Mm -hmm. That does not happen often. So I, I don't know. Doc does not seem like the guy that fits that bill. He's nah. coming with his everything from the Clippers to the, the Sixers is not a guy with a lot of postseason success. Now you can bring in different reasons as to why that happened. At the end of the day, the record is the record. The blown series leads are the blown series leads. He's got people on the Clippers who he coached for um, that have come out and been real critical of his decisions in those series. 100%. So I don't know if that's the, the best direction you want to go. So I'm interested to see how this, this whole hiring process plays out. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's a wild situation to get fired 43 games into your first season as a coach and having won 30 games. That's so – it was – and it was so unexpected. Like, I got that notification on my phone. I was like – I read it, like, twice, and then I checked if that was the real account. Like, I got right, like, facts. I'm like, what? Huh? Like – I'm like, this job's not his fate. Yeah, right. Yeah. This job's, bro. Yeah, you know, Twitter be bugging with the blue checks now. You, you'll you right. never know. But, you know, it was just – it's so unexpected. But, like I said, yeah. It, and, and like you said, also, me too, as far as, like, a lot of this stuff, as far as behind-the-scenes stuff, I'm figuring out, like, right now. Especially mm -hmm. with the Doc Rivers, like, you know, having a voice with the organization. So I can't wait to hear what comes out because <laughs> I'm telling you, it has to be something crazy, bro. It has, it has to be crazy. I mean, or it could be something as simple as, like, yo, like said, they were saying on Twitter, look, they were trying to cut the asses. And Giannis was like, yo, that's my man. <laughs> that's my guy. We can't do that, bro. You got to go. <laughs> that's crazy. Um, and for context, like, right now, this is the tied for the third shortest. NBA head coaching stint in history, like not counting interim coaches, guys that were hired to be the permanent coach. The only one shorter, uh, Jerry Tarkanian played or coached 20 games for the Spurs in the 90s before he got fired. Bob Weiss coached 30 games for the Sonics before he got fired. And then Rudy T was coaching the Lakers for 43 games. He didn't get fired. He had some health issues, so he stepped down from the position. So Adrian Griffin's 43 games would slot right in there as the third fastest coach to ever get fired in NBA history. One, I would love to know their records in comparison cuz they both of them were both of them were sub 500 by a lot. I was about to say like it's it, cuz to get fired at the 20 games is nuts right. first of all. That's crazy. Yeah. But it's going to look so weird looking at that list. It's like sub 500 sub 500 30 and 13. 30 and 13 the second seed. seed. <laughs> right. Like people out the context is going to look like Huh? Like it, some scandal, something had to come out or something. Right. I know for the well, I said the Spurs guy who coached 20 games, Jerry yeah. um Tarkanian. Um, I think this was pre-Tim Duncan, is when David Robinson was there. He couldn't get a hold of the locker room. Like they were like speaking out to the media about him. They weren't winning games. He was like dealing with the stress really bad. So it just was it's not a good situation. Mm -hmm. Um, and saying like I said, with the Sonics. Again, the guy was sub 500. So it's like to be 
in the position that Adrian Griffin was and get fired is insane. Insane. So the news is going to come out. There's going to be stories that come out. I'm interested to hear his side. I don't want to yeah, know what true. he thinks. Like, I want him need to go on somebody's podcast <laughs> and, like, really air it out. You know somebody got to put a mic in front of his face. Somebody got to invite him on a podcast. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I, look, it was it's already hard to judge a coach off of their first season being a head coach, period. It's right. like he – from a wins loss perspective, it's what the sport is about. You play to win the games, what Herm Edwards say. Mm-hmm. He was winning games. It's like he he feels like he's gonna get another shot, but like this is just it's just such a weird situation. And it's it's like if if you're really the biggest thing is really is the defense. It's like the roster from the jump was never constructed to be a good defensive team. Like I said, we thought people, they'd be able to clean up on the back end. No, like they have no. They got Malik Beasley as their best perimeter defender, bro. That's food. So unfortunate. So it's gonna be a situation that we're gonna we're gonna keep our eyes on. The other big piece of news that came out this morning, the Miami Heat made themselves a little deal before the deadline. They traded Kyle Lowry and a 2027 lottery protected first round pick to the Hornets for scary Terry Rozier. I like this trade a lot for Miami. I like it a lot. I do too. If you, if you watch the video that I put out. I said Lowry and some of these first round picks that they got are they have available to move them to beef up some of the depth that they have on this roster. And Terry's gonna fit right in. He's gonna be able to provide great, great scoring. And he's putting up 24 a night in Charlotte right now. As it stands, they'll have four different 20 point per game scores on the roster right now between Jimmy, Bam, Tyler Hero, and now Terry Rozier. So they've got some some balance scoring options. A lot of guys who can create for themselves, not to mention Jaime Jaquez too, as well. I'm liking, I I like what Terry brings to this heat roster. And I don't think that, I know that the Hornets aren't done making moves. They've already come out and said they're looking to to move Kyle Lowry on to a third destination. I don't think the heat are done making moves either. Okay. I would not be stunned if they went, and, you know, maybe package up some more of those bench pieces. Or like I said, they still, now they trade the 27 pick. I think they can trade this year's first round pick and then the 29 first round picks. I don't think you can trade them back to back years. Um, so they still have two first round picks that they in theory can deal. And a lot of people are kind of out on this year's draft class in terms of the ceiling of a lot of the players. There's no like clear cut generational prospects like they're, kind of been fortunate to have like in back to back to back years classes with guys like Paolo and Chet and Wemby. Mm-hmm. Um, that type of talent doesn't seem to be there, at least not off the rip in this this draft class. So I wouldn't be shocked if a lot of teams who are already not going to be in the lottery as is just kind of get rid of those picks now um, and hope to see if they can bring in talent. Yeah, 100 percent. Now, I like it, too. I like it. It gives them another scoring punch. That's what he mm-hmm. needed. It gives them another person that can come that can create, like I said, create their own shot and give them another scoring punch. Um, And this heat team looks scary, man. Like I said, four different 20 point, 20 point per game scores. Now, granted, obviously, I think Terry's points are going to go down a little bit because playing in Charlotte is going to be different than playing with other guys that can actually score the ball and be more of like the first, second and third option. But still, I mean, it can never hurt to add another score. Absolutely not, especially to this Miami Heat team, which is already good defensively. It can always use the extra scoring punch. So, to me, I mean, I like the deal. I definitely like it. Yeah, it it, it fits exactly what I feel like they they needed. Um, and hopeful for Kyle Lowry that he gets back on another contending team. I think they. I read an article that even if they, uh, even if the Hornets can't deal him, they're probably going to buy out his contract and he'll go and sign with a, a contender. There's no anyway. point in him. There's no point in playing on Hornets. No, he don't even need to book a flight to Charlotte. He better be. Hey, he, might as well, <laughs> he might as well not even do it, bro. It's no point. Do you think he can still help out like a contending team? Yeah, I do. Especially like when you think about come postseason time, Kyle Lowry could give you twenty impactful minutes of basketball on take both sides. Three of the charges, <laughs> right? He's gonna die for loose ball. He's just gonna do that little scrappy little little mm-hmm. bulldog stuff that Kyle Lowry do. But exactly. yeah, I agree. He could probably he could definitely help somebody out. Yeah, no. So I, he, especially if he gets bought out, he's gonna have a lot of a lot of suitors on the market. Um, so yeah, this, man, this is a big day, big day news. And we're I feel like this is every year 
around the trade deadline, there's like one trade like a week or two weeks out that I feel like is the first domino. And then it starts heating up mm-hmm. as we get closer to the day. And then obviously the, the day of the trade deadline, you get you got to have your Twitter notifications on just going down like crazy. 100 percent. And you got to be on the lookout for some of these moves, like some of these little key moves, like a type like the Terry Ogier, uh trade could be like that key move that you look later on down the line. The playoffs is like, dang, that move really. I'm not even if it don't put them over the top. It's like all right, that move was right. important. Like when Derek, when they got Derek White, um, when the Celtics got Derek White, mm-hmm. um, it was like, bro, looking back at it, it was like, like that move changed the whole trajectory of the team. Because look at right. looking at it now, it's like you got bald Derek White, you got him at the trade deadline, it's like to the trade deadline. Like now, you can't imagine him not on the Celtics team. Right, so it's gonna be interesting seeing what trades um come in before the trade deadline. Yeah, like you said, it, it, one piece can make the world of a difference. It could literally be the difference between being out in the second or third round and winning the finals. Like Facts. the first guy that came to mind, we said that was Bruce Brown. Now he, I'm pretty sure, signed with Denver. Mm-hmm. Um, but still, like that addition of a guy who can give you really impactful minutes in the postseason, like you got to have that type of stuff if you have championship aspirations. So 100%. the trade deadline is going to be active at a time where, bro, both conferences – it's a lot of parity around the league. Everybody, <sighs> it's a lot of teams buying, and it's some teams buying that probably shouldn't be buying. But hey, <laughs> there they Why are. Why not, bro? Go for it. Who knows, bro? You never know, bro. Go for it. Nah, some of y'all need to stop. <laughs> I'm, look, I'm, I'm looking at you, Brooklyn. Shut it down. Bro. <laughs> oh no, that's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shut it down, bro. We got to stop with that one. <sighs> man, man, man. I also saw somebody, this is the last thing I think before we get up out of here. I saw somebody say, I think it was Joel from the Pick a Side podcast. He tweeted out this little comparison between Terry Rozier and Dame stats. I haven't seen this for a minute, bro. <laughs> so, uh, so why trade for Dame? Why trade the farm for Dame? Something like that when you can get Terry for cheap. I mean, the way I see it, though, obviously, like, it's some, some Yeah, it's no, like, it's an like, over-exaggeration. It's, it's, crazy, it's, crazy, it's cause... a little troll. But the the premise of it, I understand. I do too. I get it. It's it's troll. It's hundred percent troll. But it's like if we look at it, bro. Damian Damian Lillard on on the Hornets would probably average like thirty five. You know, with right. on his Hornets team, and then Terry going to the Heat, obviously his points going to go down. And I wouldn't say the same for Damian Lillard. I think he'd make a huge impact um, if he was on the Heat. But I get it. It was like I said, it was definitely trolly, but nevertheless, it still was a good addition for the Miami Heat to get Terry Rozier. Definitely, especially because you like also because then you do have to factor in how much you would have give, given up to get Damian right. Lillard versus how much you gave up to get Terry. Yeah, off off the rip, if you are getting Damian Lillard, you would have had to give up the pick that became Jaime Jaquez. And that, right now, today, the Heat would never not doing that. Hell no. So I'm excited, man. I'm excited. Look, let the Heat mess around and really make a playoff run. I'm, <laughs> I'm blowing that video up. I called it months ago before anybody that's was facts. saying anything about Miami, man. That's facts. Uh, but that's going to do it for this little quick instant reaction video. We appreciate the support as always. Like, comment, subscribe to the channel, and follow us on social at Off The Glass Pod on Instagram and at Off The Glass Podcast on TikTok. And we out. Peace. Yes, sir.